Trier in the lower Moselle Valley. Units of General Patton's 3rd Army battle their way through the Eiffel Hills, straightening a line running 35 miles up to the fallen enemy base of Prim. Early in March, the 11th Armored Division, in conjunction with the 4th Infantry Division, pushes forward preparatory to a jump off from the Kill River above the Moselle to the Rhine. German positions in the hills above Trier are brought under fire. This offensive, which began late in February when armor and infantry crossed the Moselle and began clearing out the Moselle Tsar Triangle, is to result in the collapse of last enemy territory west of the Rhine. Nazi prisoners seek cover from the fires of German batteries. They were captured at Ost, Germany, northeast of Prim. This action is well beyond the Siegfried Line, which the Third Army has smashed at all points north of Trier. The drive to Cologne. On the approaches to Germany's fourth largest city, the enemy had prepared huge roadblocks to be rolled into position when first army troops struck from the northern and southern outskirts. On 5th March, men of the 3rd Armored Division eliminate pockets of resistance in the suburban towns of Pulheim and Bockelmund. A total of 15 villages around Cologne are taken in the advance on the city. The few remaining civilians seek the shelter of our lines as street fighting intensifies. Troops under Major General Maurice Rose quickly batter down the spotty opposition to their penetration of the Cologne city limits. Augmenting the two First Army units which had crossed the Ruhr at Duren, the Third Army spearheaded the drive due east, reaching the Rhine downstream from Cologne before turning south for this rush toward the city. The streets of Cologne are not far ahead. Tanks and infantry press forward on the road leading directly into the heart of the besieged metropolis. The cathedral spires gradually loom closer as the advancing column continues its uninterrupted approach. There is some machine gun fire and occasional shells, but little concerted resistance. At the underpass into the city, the Nazis have set up a barricade consisting of disabled streetcars and heavy iron beams. E and A companies of the 36th Armored Infantry Regiment are first to reach this roadblock and they rapidly remove its many components. A tank dozer is utilized to pull out the streetcars blocking the underpass. In 45 minutes, the barrier has been removed and armor rolls into the city proper. The Germans are holding out in various strong points and bomb-shattered buildings. Most of the opposition comes from regular troops. Our units report no house-to-house -house resistance by the Volkssturm. The enemy is pursued from street to street. Those attempting to flee in motor cars are repeatedly fired upon. Snipers are routed from their position. Jerry 
military tank suffers a direct hit, and the crew leaps from the flames. Concussion rocks the handheld camera with its telephoto lens. Nearby, the shell of the cathedral is still standing, almost intact except for holes in the roof. The edifice received no direct bomb hits in approximately 25 all-out raids on Cologne. Inside, the 700-year-old cathedral is bare, its religious relics having been removed to places of safety. Fifteen miles south of Cologne, the First Army captures Bonn. The enemy barely had time to blow up the span across the Rhine. Two Nazi engineers were trapped on the bridge after placing the charge. Even as the 1st Division takes Bonn, the 9th Division, which has been fighting at its side through two years of far-flung campaigning, smashes into Bad Godesberg. This city, 12 miles south of Bonn, is captured on the morning of 8th March. The normal population was 23,000. In 1938 at Godesberg, Hitler and Neville Chamberlain met in this building prior to the Munich Conference at which the dismemberment of Czechoslovakia was formally ratified. Establishing the Remagen Bridgehead, vehicles in long line move up to the span named after General Ludendorff. Nazi plans called for demolition of this bridge between Remagen on the west bank and Erpel on the east. But on 7th March, 9th Armored Division patrols removed the charges before serious damage could be done and we had a bridge intact over the Rhine. Tanks and infantry crossed to capture Erpel and surrounding high ground before pushing on inland. The bridge's railroad tracks have been planked over for vehicular traffic. Our ACAC opposes persistent enemy attempts to dive bomb the Ludendorff Bridge. <laughs> attacks, the bridgehead rapidly expands. This marks the first breaching of the Rhine River line since Napoleon crossed in 1805. Fifty miles north of the Remagen bridgehead, air and ground assaults mark the 9th Army's drive to the Rhine opposite Dusseldorf. tank of the 2nd Armored Division opens fire. <laughs> Lieutenant General Simpson's troops drive closer to the remainder of Field Marshal Montgomery's 21st Army Group, the British 2nd Army and the Canadian 1st. Striking from the Noyce area where three bridges have been blown, the 9th Army gains control of the 13 miles of the Rhine's west bank. Firing on enemy barges in the Rhine before Dusseldorf. In the meantime, the 35th Infantry Division, after taking the town of Geltern, Germany, moves forward to make contact with British units advancing down from the north. Men of the 35th meet Tommies of a Welsh division. Bicycles are used by elements of the 84th Infantry Division along roads opposite Duisburg. The two wheelers are abandoned as they strike out across somewhat rugged Rhineland terrain. A combined Anglo-American drive further north is reducing the enemy's west bank bridgehead opposite Wesel, paving the way for new Rhine crossings north of the Ruhr. Tanks participate in the routing of last enemy forces fleeing to the east bank. The battle for the town of Gaynant, due west of Duisburg. Less than three weeks after this action, the 21st Army Group is across the Northern Rhine.
Nazi prisoners seek cover from the fires of German batteries. They were and infantry crossed the Moselle and began clearing out the Moselle Tsar Triangle is to result in the collapse of last enemy territory west of the Rhine. Thirty-five miles up to the fallen enemy base of Prim. Early in March, the 11th Armored Division, in conjunction with the 4th Infantry Division, pushes forward preparatory to a jump off from the Kill River above the Moselle to the Rhine. German positions in the hills above Trier are brought under fire. This offensive, which began late in February when armor. North of Trier in the lower Moselle Valley, units of General Patton's Third Army battle their way through the Eiffel Hills, straightening a line running through.